my screen uh, via Google Meet. Thank you, Nick, for recording the meeting. Just for the record, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. And we're going to begin with roll call. Welcome, everyone, to our last and final um, LSC special meeting for the, the LSC that is cycling out. And we'll um, welcome uh, our new LSC members in for the next school year. So we'll begin roll call. I see Lori. Lori Veets, parent rep. Uh, Nick. Nick Hall, teacher rep. Cindy. Cindy Watola, parent rep. Kate. Kate Kaczynski, parent rep. Emily. Emily Holberg, teacher rep. Kirsten. Kirsten Clay, parent rep. And I'm Sarah Ogeto, parent rep. Anyone else that I'm not seeing that I may have missed that's a part of our LSC? Okay, great. Um, thank you, Nick, for confirming that is quorum. Um, I do want to acknowledge um, we do have um, some notable guests here. Our notable guests definitely include family members and staff at Harry Tubman, in addition to um, district representatives, um, our Network 4 LSC representative from Office of LSC Relations, um, Ms. Catalina Este is here. Welcome, Catalina. And then we also Thank you. Have, um, and then we also have the director for Office of LSC Relations, um, formerly with the Law Department, Ms. Kashasha Ford, who has joined us from her vacation, I believe. Welcome, uh, Kashasha. Yeah, thank you for um I love you guys. That's why I'm here. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. And um also notable reps as well as our incoming LSC uh, members. I see Ileana uh, who is here. And um I believe I may see do I see Sarah? Sarah? No. Okay. Well welcome Ileana. Um uh, welcome, uh, but uh, also welcome to family members and staff that are here. We appreciate your presence. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and move uh, forward with the agenda. Um, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? A motion, motion to approve oh. it. <laughs> no, you approve, you do it and I'll second. <laughs> Okay, I'll motion to approve the agenda. I'll motion to second the agenda. Teamwork. Thank you, Nick. There. Thank you, Lori. Uh, the floor is now open for discussion with the agenda for the approval of the agenda and discussion. All right. Uh, so we'll move to vote on the approval of the agenda as motioned. Uh, for those in favor of approving the agenda, we'll do roll call. So I'll call your name and you can say yay, nay, or abstain. Uh, so I'll call an order of which I see folks on my screen. So I'll start with Lori. Yay. Thank you, Nick. Yay. Uh, Cindy. Yay. Kate. Yay. Emily. Yay. Kirsten. Yay. And I am a yay as well, Sarah Ogeto. And so that is unanimous for the approval of the agenda. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge and open the floor if we have any meeting minutes to discuss or share. I don't believe I re received any yet. Okay, thank you, um, Cindy. We've had quite a number of meetings back to back, so I'm sure we'll get those um, out the door sooner than later uh, and thank you in advance to our incoming LSC members for um, finishing that old business uh, with the approval of the meeting minutes. So we'll move forward on the agenda. As noted, there are no meeting minutes to approve and open up the floor to public participation. Um, Nick, would you mind reading the um, public participation statement and then just call our members if we have anyone who, ha well, let's just ask this question. Has anyone signed up for public participation? Um, we have three people who have signed up. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and read. 
members of the public are welcome to make comments and ask questions, but must sign in to participate. The public is called upon to speak in the order they sign in. The public is kindly requested to limit their comments and questions to three minutes. Based on the comments or questions, um, the LSE may address some concerns directly and if necessary, create an action step to follow up with the involved parties at a future date. While the LSE will do its best to address any comments or questions when necessary, more time may be needed to adequately address a particular concern. And our first public participant is Eliana in Cerny. Eliana? Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my question was more like, or just like maybe a rhetorical question. If the questions that were asked in the previous special meeting um, about clarification, about certain topics, et cetera, was the info provided to the current LSC? Um, I know you went into closed session, but all the questions that were either put up uh, in the chat by community members, staff, uh, or anyone else, and the ones that were made at, in the public um, participation time, were those questions, uh, were the answers to those questions provided to you guys on the, that closed session or by any other means like later or email or whatever? Um, that was my question. <laughs> Thank you, Eliana. Our next public participant, I do not see her on the screen, is Molly Conway Alvarez. Okay, and our third person who signed up was Sarah Shelton, who I do not see either. Okay, so I guess that concludes um, public participation. All right, thank you, Nick. So um, with respect to the question that Eliana um, put on the table, I'll take a stab at a response to that, and I just encourage our members to um, contribute as well um, to, to the questions. So Eliana, um, definitely <clears throat> we did share the questions that we did ask initially uh, to Principal Gibson um, and um, the, the question you had is, you know, were, were we given answers to our questions to a large extent? Yes. Um, um, to, to, to a smaller extent, no. Um, and, and that smaller extent is um, due to a, a large part, um, we were uh, told that, you know, it's, a open, it's, an, it's an ongoing investigation. Um, some, of, some of the questions we had asked um, as it relates to the specifics around the concerns of the allegation uh, could not be um, answered. Um, but in terms of kind of those larger questions as it relates to um, the incident itself, um, and it's, um, it was this incident something that was connected to um, a, a, an overall concern for student safety at the school, um, their response that we were provided was that the answer is no, that it does is not an incident that um, directly impacts the student safe, student safety, um, student safety overall student safety for the school, um, and we, we did um, share that response um, out at the at, in, when we came back from closed session at the last um, special meeting, because we felt that that was a very important uh, point to raise, um, um, and and. Um, that was shared um, to us, and, and we shared it to 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 the student to to the school community. So um, I'll pause there. Oh, and you also asked about the questions as it relates to what the questions that were posed in the chat towards the end of that meeting, right? So I do have um, those questions um, that I'll just read those out loud in the um, for folks just to give some transparency around what were those questions. Um, uh, that were shared uh, during our last LSE meeting publicly in the chat. Um, one of those questions what, what was something uh, was along the lines of, thank you everyone for expressing your concerns and for being so giving of your time. If the LSE can provide a timeline of when the next meeting may be, it sounds like there may be another meeting between now and the first organization meeting of incoming LSE, but it is unclear. Can you please clarify? So here we are. 
Um, we're having this last meeting before the next organizational meeting for the new LSC. Um, so that kind of answers that question. Um, the timeline is here, and this is our last meeting for the um, for the LSC is before the new um, LSC um, takes effect tomorrow. Um, and Eliana, as an incoming LSC member, I hope that um, you know um, the the new crew um, will be able to share kind of those key um, meeting dates for the organizational meeting because I think folks are, are keen on that. Um, and another question that was posed that I do see in the chat um, was um, um, affirming um, whether or not um, if the if the um, incident uh, that in question as it related to um, the text that Principal Gibson had received, um, if, if it was considered a threat to the, to the school community. And at this point in time, um, CPD did rule out that it was not um, identified as a threat overall to the school community. Um, so I wanted to um, uh, just uh, reiterate that. And so those looked like those were the main questions that were asked. Um, and so I'll open the floor for members to respond and Eliana, I see your hand raised. So um, go ahead, Eliana. Um, yeah, I also, I forgot to ask because district had mentioned after that closed session that they were going to send out a written statement to the school community. I haven't received that. I don't know if it's out. Do we have a timeline for that? Um, I know it's summer, but we're still waiting and I'm sure I'm not the only one waiting for that as reassurance and as the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for um, seeing that. Um, Nick, and then I see Kashasha's hand raised. Um, I believe maybe Kashasha raised her hand to maybe, I had that same question, Liana. I wanted to know if there was any updates on that, on the statement going out from safety and security. Um, and then I do notice Sarah Shelton has joined our meeting and she had signed up for of your participation, so let's make sure after Kashasha and Kate um, to give um, Sarah her three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, for that recognition. Thank you, Mr. Hall, for yielding your time uh, to me. Um, so I was able to um, follow with Jadine. I actually called her on Saturday um, just as a follow up uh, for this week, and she was on her way on a plane <laughs> out of town. Um, so it is still in development. You, It will be coming, um, but I did follow up. She's out of town this, this week. Um, so I'll follow up again um, the following week and I will circle back to the team. Okay, thanks for the update, um, uh, Kishasha. Um, Kate? I was just going to say this. I, I, for whatever this is worth, this is just kind of my perception of things that I can share that, you know, that there will be a statement coming out of CPS. Um, what I would say is I think after we had our closed session la last meeting, I had a different understanding of the issue and I felt comfortable that CPS and CPD had handled it in the appropriate manner. And I no longer felt like the, um, the communication in the moment about the concern necessarily needed to be alerted to the whole school community. And so I'm only speaking for myself. My understanding of the concern changed after I heard specific details and I was much more comfortable with how CPS centrally handled it. Um, if if that seems to, and I, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna speak for the rest of the council members, but I felt like that was the general impression was that all of us walked away with a very different understanding of the concern than we had walked into this special session with. Um, please, if anyone else disagrees with me that they felt differently, but um, I felt reassured by CPS Centrally's handling of the issue um, and, 
I just wanted to share that because I feel like people have heard me be very vocal and speak what I really how I feel. Um, and so I don't know if it reassures anybody if I feel like it was handled appropriately from central CPS and that I don't think my child was in danger at the school at any time, which prior to that special session, I was unclear about. Uh, thanks, Kate, for sharing. Um, Lori? Uh, my question was, is anybody else, I, I, I was under the impression that it was Principal Gibson's responsibility to send out a um, list of like potential dates because we have till July 15th for our meeting and for our, you know, our planning meeting. And I have heard zero from her since this has happened. So has anybody heard about what our dates are? I would love to get our new members sworn in. I would love to get a date on the calendar. And I haven't heard from any of that. So, um, Lori, just my understanding and interpretation of the CPS LEC manual is that, um, you know, those dates can be done in consultation with the principal. Um, so if there is you know, some guidance or support that, you know, if, if there's some recommendations um, that members can put forward uh, for the organizational meeting, just so to ensure that 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 conversation happens uh, July 15th, um, I would uh, highly advise um, members, uh, incoming council members to uh, have you organize to identify some dates that work for the collective body and, and uh, put forward those um, recommended dates to Principal Gibson. Um, um, you know, if not, um, share 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 that specific date that works. Um, if, and I, I do know that she's on vacation right now. I'm not sure when her return date is, um, but I definitely would not uh, want to drop the ball on that, uh, or just you know want to stay in front of in front of that, so we can ensure that we are, that meeting happens July 15. Should we let Sarah speak? Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Sarah Shelton. I'm an incoming parent rep to the LSC. And thank you, Nick, for facilitating comments. Um, so following the last couple meetings, I, I did have a number of parents express to me how disconnected and disengaged they were. Um, and I know in the collective quest to repair the relationship between faculty and Principal Gibson, I think across the course of these last few calls, um, it's left the parent community feeling really, um, for lack of better word, like they've really felt like they're in the dark, that they weren't getting more information. Whereas, you know, we've had hours and hours of calls and there's been a lot of frustration and kind of a sense of despair expressed. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to light. I'm sure that you heard that on your end as well. So, and, you know, in speaking to the closed sessions, I know that the, I know that the reason given was that there were, the answers that were going to be um, coming potentially from Principal Gibson would be privileged confidential answers. But is there any way that the questions that we're going to be asked, can those questions be shared with the greater community? And I believe we did post those questions in the chat. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong about that? But we did. Do we not share those questions? I don't think so. I think that we were going to consult with um kashasha kind of figure out which questions would we would be able to share outside of closed session so but i don't think that we ever shared the list of questions thanks cindy so i really feel like we should talk about the questions what answers we got and then get them approved by kashasha and maybe dr travelos to because 
I don't want to share anything that's privileged or part of an investigation or whatever that I shouldn't have. But honestly, I think the vast majority of what was shared with us during that session should be able to be shared. I'm, I, I'm kind of at, I'm kind of confused as to why it couldn't be. Um, and so I think we may, maybe Sarah and I, before our, we are done at midnight tonight, we could share um, an email with um, Dr. Travelos and Kashasha just to get approval of what we could share as an LSC, as our parting thing um, to share with parents, because I think that that would be appropriate, but I think we've all been a little bit confused as to what we can share and what we can't, but I would think the majority, I mean, we didn't really talk about anything that I thought would be all that privileged or, I don't know. So I think we will, Kashasha, would that be okay? Sorry, trying to find a mute button. Um, yeah, I think that would be fine. Um, I think what we, we didn't get into, into really specifics of the, the statement per se. Um, you can give information about the, you know, the, the gist or the context of what it was. You can talk about, you know, how it was addressed and why it is not um, kind of a, a CPS matter and more so a CPD personal investigation or sorry, private matter that's being investigated by CPD. I think that's appropriate. And it, I know this sounds like, because there's not so much information that's been out there. So the natural inclination is to, to go to like this, go to the worst case scenario and I get it. So I, under, I appreciate, um, this council being thoughtful about getting some information out to kind of quell the concerns of the the uh, community. So I think that's, it would have to be in general terms. Yeah. I think restating what Kashasha just said, because since she stated it in those terms, I feel comfortable saying it. CPD deemed this not to be an issue to the school but a private matter that needed to be dealt with, not as a school community, but as a private individual person issue. And so that kind of is the main takeaway from all of it. Um, but I think getting a little bit more information about why they made that assessment so that people feel comfortable that it was the appropriate assessment, I think is important. And so we'll try and that to- that would probably come from J. Dean because J. Right. Dean has more of that context. So just how you right. couched it is perfect, right? Anything more than that, right? You know, it would be right. getting into the weeds of it. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I see a few hands raised, and then I, I think we'll address the comment in the chat. Um, Nick, I saw your hand, but I think you put it down, or maybe it just expired. Um, so I see Cindy and Emily, and Nick, if you wanted to make a comment, we'll, we can come back to you. Um, Cindy? Um, is there a specific question, Sarah, right now that you just want to ask, and then we can just, was you know, that came from parents, that we can either ask, you know, we can either answer it? or we can ask for some guidance? Yeah, it, it wasn't one specific question. I think there were just so many questions. Mm -hmm. And the general feel of it was that the LSC knows what's going on and a handful of parents have um, the gist of what's going on. But when meetings are called and we're saying, you know, there are concerns to student safety and there's a greater body of, you know, parent and caregiver community who who don't know what's going on. Um, it creates a lot of alarm when we don't have specific um, answers or points that we can address. I think it's because the issues have been spoken spoken of in such vague terms. And I think, you know, like as you mentioned before, to protect the privacy of the involved parties. Um, but if there's more that can be shared, I know it would be reassuring for a lot of parents and caregivers to hear 
what can be shared and for them to feel more connected and like they're a part of this process because what's being expressed to me is that they feel very a part of this process. So they're just asking for more transparency overall. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Emily and then Nick. Sorry, I was trying. I was trying to read the chat as well. I guess I just was sort of responding to Sarah and other parents' concerns um, and the fact that, like, if you thought we had more information from Principal Gibson, that I just wanted to be clear that we do not. Besides, like, the one written statement from the very first meeting that she said that she was not going to attend and that there was no concerns um, for student safety. Um, and it was sort of like a general statement, in my opinion. We have not heard from her via a meeting or via email or any sort of statement. So I just, I thought I should share that not to speak ill of Miss Gibson, but just to clarify that like we have no more information than anybody else as it relates to speaking to her or hearing from her. I'm not sure that makes anybody feel better, but I just thought I would be candid on that, that this particular issue is being dealt with with CPS and CPD, but just, it feels like what you're mentioning, Sarah, is like that there's other feelings of like despair and morale and just sort of confusion. And um, we have not heard from Principal Gibson on any of those comments. So just wanted to sort of reiterate that point. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Nick? Yeah, I just wanted to add, like, I totally get um, where you're coming from, Sarah. Like, it is frustrating um, when everything is just kind of general, um, like there's nothing worse than getting an email that kind of doesn't really describe um, what's happened. I just want to remind everyone, you know, we as an LSC, we are here, we hear you, we hear every concern, um, we are here to represent you. Um, and um, I think as Kate said, we were satisfied with CPS's response during the closed session and we have shared what we could, which I know it's in general terms, but um, I will um, reiterate what Kate said that I do think CVS and CPD, uh, once we found out what was happening, um, that it was handled correctly. Um, and so we, we shared what we could share. I do think this kind of does um, reinforce the fact that that letter, even though like Kate, you're good with it, I'm good with it, like I get it because we were in the session, I do think that letter needs to go out to the entire community because not everyone can attend these meetings or watch the recordings um, and the sooner the better. So we can just put this matter to rest um, and move on. And I'll, I'll just add, I mean, it's, it's been our due diligence to really get to the bottom of this as LAC members, but most importantly as staff and families here. And so um, I just, I'll just reiterate what, what has been shared already. Thank you for saying, sharing that, Nick. Um, I'm sorry, Cindy or Kate? I can't remember whose hand was raised first. Okay, uh, Cindy? Yeah, okay, go ahead, Cindy. I, pr I should probably know this, but I don't. Is the case closed? Or is it still, it's still ongoing? And is that something, even though it's personal and it's being handled by CPD, is that something, Sarah and the greater you know, in our greater school community. Is that something that you want to know? Is that important? Even though it is not a, deemed not a risk or a threat to the safety of our school and our students. But if it is an ongoing personal case, I don't know, I, it, is that important? I can't speak for everyone, um, but you know, some parents have expressed that they would like to know more about what's going on and whatever can be shared as long as it's um, not going to harm anyone and isn't confidential privilege information. Um, if it pertains to the school and it pertains to the principal and it pertains, you know, if not directly to the safety of the students, if anything, at least to the well-being of students, you know, they, they would like to know and um, just feel more connected by the information that's being shared. Okay. So I just want to say, um, 
I want to be very clear that feeling better about CPS's approach to this specific concern that we talked about at the last um, meeting is very different than my other concerns about student safety, where I have incredibly, I am very, very concerned that there are issues, problems, issues with how um, student safety concerns have been reported this year, lack of student safety concerns, lack of reporting, intimidation and threats about people reporting student safety concerns. There's a lot that I am very concerned about in terms of the safety of our school and student safety of our school and the role that Principal Gibson has played in creating a culture of safety in a school. I really do. When I said I did not feel like this concern that we were talking about last week, specifically in closed session, is something that put my child at risk. I want to be very clear that I'm talking about that one incident. Um, and I feel very, very differently about all of the other student safety concerns that have come up and that we've talked about. And so I really want to be clear to everyone who's listening or going to watch this call that I am very clearly defining this one concern that was brought up, I think, in a very inappropriate manner by the chair of the LSC at the end of that last meeting without more information created a space where lots of parents had concerns about safety of their child without enough information to know what was going on. And I think all of us with more information um, feel like that specific incidence was handled pretty well by CPS. Again, centrally, I'm not talking about it at the school level, um, but I have a ton of concerns for student safety based on all of the other things that we've heard from teachers, staff members, and parents, um, and lack of reporting or intimidation or threats of retaliation for people who were trying to make those um, concerns public or to report them into, um, into Aspen. So I just want to be clear that I'm, you're not saying like, oh, everything's fine. There's no problems. There's nothing that needs to be addressed. With all of the things that we're talking about, with all of the things we talked about prior to that one concern that was dealt with at the last meeting, um, the problem that we have about being more open and transparent is all of these things involve students that have the right to privacy and where there's allegations made against a staff member, those people need privacy and you know they, they need due process to figure out what's going on. So it's very hard for us to openly talk about what has happened and where the concerns are in specific detail. And I know that's incredibly frustrating for the parent community because we want open transparency about all of this, but particularly with student safety and allegations that involve specific students, we can't talk about any of the specifics of that unless a parent were to give us permission to talk about it in an open space. And so in a lot of ways, we know what we've been told or what we've had access to that people have talked to us about privately, which is why we're bringing all of this up that we can't share in a public format. And I know that's incredibly frustrating, but I just wanted to make that clear division of the concern last week. I'm kind of putting it aside. And then everything else we talked about before that um, concern was brought up at the end of that one LSC meeting, everything else we've talked about I don't feel like I've gotten adequate answers. Um, every, you know, there are some real concerns and real concerns about safety um, that I do not think we've gotten any answers on. And we continue, continue to push. And we hear that OSP is still investigating or the OIG is investigating or whatever is happening. But with the amount of information I have, and that I know to be truthful and have been verified by people that I've talked to in CPS, 
that I think is the thing we really need to be focusing on today because that is where if I I feel like I'm walking away from this LSC today because I will no longer be a part of it. And that is the part that if we don't firmly stand and make sure that this is moving forward, because if things are not changed, I have some serious concerns about safety at the school in the coming year. Thank you, Kate, for making that distinction and how important that distinction is, especially for our families and teachers and our staff and our school community for next year. Uh, Lori? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to join in on that, and I want to make it clear that we're not keeping <laughs> things from you. Um, we're just so, so, our hands are so incredibly frustratingly tied. So we have all of these issues that we can't tell you about because we have all this information. I personally have information because I'm one of the people who filed one of those claims. So I do have a lot of information because I helped file some of the student protection claims because they affected my family. I'm very angry that we are not hearing from Principal Gibson. I brought it up about, yeah, I can, we're going to have to schedule that meeting, but we made it very clear that it, it, I know that there's guidelines, but we had said that Principal Gibson should be reaching out. We have not heard from her. I have not heard from her. If you remember in those meetings that was said, hey, Lori, we'd love to have you. I've heard you. I want you to help hire people. We're not being invited to help hire. I don't think that there have been any interviews scheduled and we have a lot a frightening amount of open positions to be filled come September. And I will be honest, when I have talked to teachers outside of our school, the rumor and that the word is, you don't wanna work at our school because of everything that is happening. This is a small community and people are hearing those things. I'm also gonna put it out there publicly and I've just been sad and haven't wanted to. I'm pulling River and Raven from this school. And you know how much I love this community. And you know how much I was a part of it. I'm keeping Canyon for his last year because I will tell you that his class is perfect and they are dream children um, and he loves it. But River and Raven are leaving because I don't feel safe at our school. I don't feel that they will be happy at our school. And if our principal, with things, whatever were to change, it's going to be chaos next year, no matter what. And I'm going to do the hard thing and I moved my kids to another school, they're leaving their community because of all of the things that are happening. We don't have a lot of answers. The way that we were informed as your LSC about the threat situation didn't feel good. And if anybody out there was watching and felt that we were being awful, because of the way that sometimes we sound, it's because we have been doing so much and we know so much that we're not allowed to say. And sometimes it's hard to be politically nice because we care so deeply and we have been working so hard and doing so much and running our head up against a wall. And really we've been running our head up against a wall all year. Um, there's a lot of people on these calls who have been volunteering and trying and trying and it's just exploded. So we don't, know anything because our leader is not communicating. I would expect by this point, our leader, the person in charge of our safety, our guidance, our morale, our community, our energy, would have made some kind of bigger statement by now, would have shown up at any of these multiple meetings, would have been actively engaged, and they're not. So here I am, another night that I'm on a special LSC meeting, um, we're going to have to figure out how to get new people. We're going to have to elect new people and we're going to have to continue this work without. And I really, really extremely thank Kate and Sarah and everybody who's been involved. Um, you've gone above and beyond. The fact that you're doing this right up to the, the last bell is amazing. You will be missed. And I will say that I know our, our two new members that we have ready to go are, are ready to go. And, uh, I'll be honest, we're going to need a little of your new energy, at least for me. I'm going to speak for me. I'm not going to speak for everybody else. I need some more new energy because I'm feeling very beaten down and I'm feeling very sad and I'm feeling like I'm sorry, CPS. I really appreciate the work that you're doing and that you're coming in. But I don't I don't feel like CPS is going to ride in and save us. I don't know what is going to happen but I need more and I'm gonna need more energy. And if parents, I can't tell you the secrets, um, but I will talk to you. And if you ever have questions about how I'm reacting, I can talk about that. I will talk to you. Um, we are going to do our best and we will 
gladly appreciate your support, but we are not getting any information. So it's extremely sad and it's extremely frustrating. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. I just wanted to say a couple of things in the chat because I know a lot of people will watch these meetings um, on video and the chat does not show up in that. Um, and so just people were asking at the last meeting that we had as a group, there was the um, Principal Gibson gave the one pager about like what would be happening in terms of hiring and what the process would be. And there was a very specific timeline that kind of talked about interviews happening that week that we met or setting up interviews by phone and then in person interviews and hopefully offering positions by the end of June. Um, and just so everybody knows, there have not been any interviews for the two middle school positions or any of the DL positions thus far. Um, and as far as we know, you know, there. My understanding was there was a, that a lot of the teachers really liked um, one person for a, a position, and the expectation was that that person was going to be offered a position. Um, but it doesn't look like there's been any action steps taken on hiring for that position either. And so we are starting July with a lot of difficult positions to fill that are open and. I just want to draw attention to the timeline that was created um, by Principal Gibson. The last time we we spoke with her has not really come to fruition at all. Um, and I think the people who are on the hiring committee have not really heard about anything that they would be doing moving forward. Um, and so um, just wanting to say that out loud. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, I know that, um, uh, Lori, you have your hand raised, and um, I do have just some information I, I want to share um, uh, for the general student um, body as we are having this discussion around student safety um, issues and concerns, and then um, we'll move into closed session. But I just want to make sure everyone has the information, uh, the resources and tools they need. Um, as we all lean in to assure student um, safety here at the school. So, uh, Lori? I just am answering the chat. I, I don't, I feel bad, you know, because I still love our school and it affects our funding and we were already dropping class sizes, but you can get into any CPS school at this point. There's so many people leaving for the suburbs and things. But we shouldn't, I, I really feel bad because the more people we lose, but I will say I'm no longer, I was the person a lot of people came to through raise your hand and CPS pages if you were looking for a great school to attend. And I've pulled my recommendations. I'm no longer, I apologize to people that I sold because I spent a lot of time trying to convince people to join our school based on I wanted, you know, their parent, like great parents and great energy. And now I'm like, I, I'm not going to be, I, you can do what you want but I don't want you looking at me for approval or like suggestions to attend Tubman. I would not suggest Tubman anymore. I love my staff. You guys are amazing. And I love the community and families and that hasn't changed, but I no longer think that we're the school that we were a year ago. And that is extremely frustrating and sad because literally I bought pom-poms. I mean, we were psyched and we started those committees and we did the work. These are, there are some parents on here, man, that did the work. And this is where we ended up. It's very, very disheartening. So, sorry, people. Uh, uh, Kate and then Nick. I just want to say something positive. <laughs> um, the, the one thing that's great, if we can get this train back on the right track, is that CPS is holding, like whatever money we are getting from CPS in the fall is the money we're getting from CPS. We are guaranteed that money. If our enrollment is worse in the 10th day of school or the 20th day of school, it's not going down. We're gonna be able to keep all of our teachers. We're gonna do, be doing everything. In a lot of ways, if we can get this train back on the tracks and start moving in a positive direction, we actually may have a year of smaller class sizes, be able to do a lot of curriculum development, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of making up for um, the pandemic education losses, those kinds of things, and be in an 
awesome place to recruit a lot of families and kind of get things back together because this year our funding is intact. And so I just want to say like the reason that we're pushing so hard and trying to make changes and make things different is because we need to get things going back in the right direction. And this is not a lost cause. We have great teachers. We have great families. We have a really strong community that's not going to go down this fast, this easily, but we all have to be called to action to make a change and make things different than they are right now. And so I just want to say that, that this is not I think Lori is in a very, very sad place because she's made some decisions for her family that she had to do given um, her concerns about next year. But I really do want everyone else to hear this is not, we need to get things back in the right direction. And that is why this LSC keeps pushing and why we keep having all these meetings that people come to because we are trying to work towards change because the current path is not a uh, it cannot continue in this way. And so I just want to say that, that I am more positive because I think we just have to do what needs to be done to get things going in a better direction, whatever that may be. Thank you, Kate. We appreciate it. Uh, Nick, and then uh, Nick, I'll ask if you can, um, if I, maybe I'll share that, uh, presentation with you and you can share it or give me the ability to share my screen. I don't know how we can work that out, but I will share that presentation if you want to share it on your screen or if you can figure out how to get me permission okay. to share Um, Which presentation? Um, it's basically just a presentation to let folks know kind of what um, their rights and responsibilities are as it relates to how we as a school community can ensure student safety. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know. I just wanted to say, just as one of the staff members who is staying at the school and on the LSC, um, you know, I, I do not want the message going out right now to be that our school is unsafe. Um, it is not unsafe. There were, as Kate has mentioned, as LSC members have mentioned, there were issues in reporting safety concerns. Um, to my knowledge, every issue has now been reported and is now being dealt with by OSP or OIG, CPS, the district. Um, the district, the, net, the network has been, um, you know, in the loop since, I know personally since February um, of this year, uh, just trying to, to make this work. Um, so yes, please, you know, if the message, our school is a safe place for students. Um, it is a safe place for teachers. Yes, we've had issues, um, but we do not want the message to be just everybody leave because that is not going to fix anything. And now I will try to figure out how to let you share. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And I did share the document with you um, just recently, if that's easier. So um, I just wanted to pull this information quickly together as it relates to, you know, you know, as an LSC um, with representatives um, from, as, as family members, teachers and staff and our school leadership here, um, what exactly um, are those kind of rights and responsibilities we have um, that's accessible to us um, as a school community? Um, in addition to you know, culminating this information about what we know and what we can do, um, um, specifically as it relates to our role as parents, as teachers, and uh, staff uh, on the LSC. Next slide, Nick. So with that said, I this is really just um, a link to the um, OSP um, uh, uh, page, but I wanted just to make sure everyone has that link. Um, and hopefully we can, in, I think I would advise for our meeting minutes, if we can include that link, Cindy, in our meeting minutes, that would be great. 
Um, but there's a clear set of policies and procedures about, you know, how families can report um, issues around student safety concerns. There's a d direct pathway in how teachers can report that, and there's also a pathway for our school leadership to report that. Um, and a lot of that goes through our office of um, uh, student, uh, or, or the OSP office. And we also have Illinois statute that governs, you know, um, how student safety issues should, should be concerned. And as an LSE body, um, what what kind of statute we have in play to um, to 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 reference as we're moving forward and thinking about um, what are charges and ensuring that student safety issues are addressed and what's the what's our path what could be our pathways um, to 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 ensure student safety issues are addressed those pathways include making sure everyone has the information they need warnings um, remedi remediation plans or even thinking about you know how we um, use that statute to um, make some decisions about uh, finding, you know, ways, finding new leadership. So there's CPS um, protocols and policies and procedures that we have, but I just wanted to make sure folks had that, those links. And there's also uh, bumpers and guidance and resources and supports at, 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 within Illinois statute, okay? So let's, let's make it more clear about the LSC role. So there is a wonderful LSC, LSC to, uh, manual, and there's also trainings. I hope our incoming um, LSC members take advantage of these trainings um, before they begin. Um, but that link that I just shared with you, Nick, if you can go back one, is the link to the actual manual um, as well. And then page 10 and 11 more specifically outline the role of LSC members. More specifically, we can move forward in the next slide, Nick, is um you know what are those roles as, as it relates to student safety and i'll just reference our attention to um you know recommending um for our incoming um lsc body you know is there additional evaluation criteria that we want to include um for principal gibson as it relates to student safety um that may not necessarily be highlighted in our current evaluation criteria so that's definitely a recommendation that we want to put forward for our new incoming LSC is thinking about some additional evaluation criteria um, that we want to think about as it relates to assuring um, some of those overarching student safety concerns that we know still have to be addressed. Okay, because that's within um, our, our purview as an LSC and, and, and so we can think about that additional evaluation criteria. And then also thinking about how we are being mindful of that evaluation, evaluation process throughout the year. Um, it is not something we do at one point of time in the year. It's something that's ongoing and we should probably be talking about um, that evaluation even at the organizational meeting uh, that we have before July 15th. Um, next slide. And then um, the other point uh, within the LSU charge in looking at student safety is our CIWP. We have some very clear language in our CIWP as it relates to assuring student safety. So I would just encourage and implore our incoming LSU members to really hone in on those points in our CIWP and how we're upholding and resourcing and being critical thought partners around how we're implementing that CIWP, um, you know, um, even we know that work starts in the summer. Um, so, so just wanted to kind of highlight two places um, and um, those, um, uh, those, those statutes and those policies and procedures just so that we have all the information we need uh, to be able to move forward um, into the next um, incoming LSC in the next school year. So I'll, I'll wrap that up and say thank you. Uh, Nick, you can stop the, stop the share. Um, so with that said, um, any additional uh, points of discussion um, for our agenda before we do move into closed session because there are some um, pieces that we do. Before we move into closed session, we would like to invite um, district staff as well as um, incoming LSE members into that closed session. Um, and, but with that said, are there any additional comments, questions that we want to have? Okay, go ahead, Nick. 
Um, just that on the agenda, we did have one more item before going into closed session, which was principal eligibility. Yeah, so um, recently we, we did um, receive um, some information regarding uh, a principal eligibility concern. Um, we just wanted to let folks know that we have um, communicated to the appropriate offices within the district around addressing that allegation around principal um, eligibility. That was another really super duper vague comment <laughs> statement. And I just feel like parents' heads are like rolling off their shoulders. So can we sort of give a time frame to make that less ambiguous and possibly our our goal to answer that for them? Um definitely. Um I think a timeline can be and would be shared. Um I definitely want to um confer with um um Kishashe in the closed session about if we can you know that that timeline that we can definitely share and then um how much more detail we can share about that um and 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 then come back out and and share what we can share from that that closed session And also, thanks for the presentation. Absolutely. That's good. And I, I see the chat. I see the chat and I hear you. Um, we'll definitely be able, hopefully, to give some more clarity um, after the closed session. And I hope the closed session won't take too long um, as, as we move into it. Um, thank you all for your patience there. Um, so any additional comments or questions before we vote to invite folks into that closed session? Okay, so with that said, um, uh, would someone be willing to motion to invite incoming LSE members and district uh, representatives into our closed session? I move to invite incoming LSE members and visiting CPS. I don't know how I'm saying this because I'm brain dead. Leadership. Those of you that are joining us tonight that are not a part of Tubman Elementary. I move to welcome you to closed session. I second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And so with that said, um, open for discussion. I will note the comment in the chat, Laura Francis posed, LSE meetings are subject to Open Meetings Act when four or more members are meeting. They have to post publicly and allow the public to join. Um, I know there's guidance in the manual around closed sessions, um, and I will share that guidance. Um, I'll read that out loud um, just for clarity's sake. Um, I'm referring to um, the CPS LSE manual as it relates to closed sessions, um, um, and I'm looking at page 68. That link is in the presentation that I just made. Um, the OMA Act allows for public bodies to discuss certain subjects in sessions or meetings closed to the public called closed or executive sessions or meetings. Although the LSE may discuss and um, deliberate certain matters during closed sessions or meetings, no final action may be taken either during the closed sessions or at closed meetings. Any final action taken by the LSE in open meetings concerning matters discussed during the closed sessions or meetings must begin with explanation that informs the public about the meeting um, being decided. Um, so um, let's kind of get to the, um, the, dis the pieces that can be discussed in the closed session would include litigation, evaluation, selection, retention, or request for suspension and dismissal of the school principal, um, the addition terms of a principal's performance contract, um, qualifications of candidates for LSE vacancies and school safety and security issues. And that actually is the reason why we're moving into closed session. Um, and then the question really is just about um, who's and you know how um, closed session, who's um, 
how closed sessions are held. Um, and I'm moving down on page 69, closed meetings. Local school councils may also vote to advance to hold meetings closed to the public or to close portions of future open to open meetings. So um, I share all that to share that um, closed sessions are recorded um, and that the the um, information from those closed sessions um, um, uh, are, are, are shared. Um, and so unfortunately though, um, with those particular issues at hand that was just shared previously, um, this is the reason why we're moving into a closed session to talk um, more specifically about school safety and security issues um, and really kind of speaking on the fact that we may be um, talking about issues that are um, either one under current investigation or two may be um, having information that could breach confidentiality. Uh, Nick? Oh, I just want to um, thank you, Sarah, for sharing all of that. I think just point of order, there is a motion that has been made and seconded, and I think we're getting a little bit away from it with this discussion. Um, and, you know, I, this is at our next organizational meeting. If we want to talk about letting public participants put questions in the chat, we can, but as, as per our current um, LSE um, guidelines um, for Tubman, um, public participation is only during public participation and um, public has to sign up. And I get that it's frustrating, um, but I think tonight is an example of why it can get a little bit out of hand because we're not we're losing our focus. So um, the motion on the table, right, was to let district members in and and um, yeah, but Kashash LSC is, members and they have to be mentioned by name. Right. Um, can I just ask a quick question about that specific thing? Sarah, is there any or this is a Kashasha question. I want the 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 LSE members who will be starting to be into the session, I think it's very important because they're going to, as of midnight, this is going to be the, the job that they're taking over. My question is, is there anything that we would not be able to discuss in closed session because um, the new LSE members are present? Was that to Kashasha? Um, yes. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Uh, from that member seal tomorrow. Hmm. I just am yeah. worried. Could we bring them in for the initial discussion? And then if we get to a point where we're talking about principal evaluation or something like that, then they would log off. So the information that you're that you're going to be discussing, if it's if it's something that's not confidential, I guess yeah. If it's not confidential, you can ask them to leave. But they're it's a tough one <laughs> because technically we're not members. You're inviting us in, right? And so that same logic would say you can pretty much invite whoever you want in, but it would have to be for a specific limited purpose because you can't talk about things that they shouldn't have, they shouldn't be privy to. So, yeah. So maybe we can have all three of you, and I'm sorry, Miss, As I don't know if it's Dr. or uh, Miss Asaf as well maybe we could invite you guys in and then if we get to a point where we're actually talking about some of the, like the privileged things that we could not do with other people present then we could ask those members to leave for that portion does that make sense sarah yeah it does okay so, so I, I, i'm going to make a motion to invite eliana and sirini Sarah Shelton, Kashasha Ford, and um, Kareem As Asaf to the closed session. And do we still have Carolina Estate? Did she drop off? Um, I'm right here too, if you oh. would like to invite me. <laughs> Sorry. And Carolina Estate. All right. 
would any thank you kate for amending uh that motion uh, would anybody like to um second the amended motion kate has put on the table i second the amended motion thank you nick uh open for discussion all right let's move into roll call i'll call names uh, yay nay or abstain nick yay uh, kate yay Lori. Yay. Me. Yay. Kirsten. Yay. Thank you, Emily. Yay. And I believe me. Yay. So that is unanimous. All right. Nick, would you help us move into a, the uh, Closed session, and we'll be back. So, I motion to go into closed session. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank, thank you. The motion to go into closed session. Thank you, Nick. And you're about to second Nick's motion. I'll second, Lori. Thank you, Lori. Open for discussion. Okay. All right. Uh, Nick, yay, they're abstain to move into closed session. Yay. Gates. Yay. Uh, Lori. Yay. Uh, Cindy. Yay. Kirsten. Yay. Emily. Yay. And I'm a yay as well. That's Sarah. But two, and that is unanimous. All right. Thank you. Let's move into closed session. The link, the link, is, the link is in the chat. All right, great. Um, all right, welcome back everyone thank you so much um, for your patience as we moved into closed session we are back um, and so with that said i wanted just to provide a little bit more um, clarity as related to our last point of discussion before i moved into closed session um, which was the concern around um, principal eligibility so i wanted to provide a little bit more um, clarity around that particular issue um, so members of the LSC, including uh, members of the school community, received a letter alleging um, the principal's residence. Um, and so um, that the fact that the principal was not a resident of Chicago. Um, we don't know who that individual is um, that sent that letter. Um, no one has been able to um, identify the individual. And we wanted just to kind of let folks know the content of that it was an allegation questioning the principal's residency. Um, and we are we have um, uh, requested that that matter be reviewed and um, and be investigated. So we wanted just to um, uh, put a point of clarity around that issue um, and let folks know the update um, on that issue more specifically. Okay. So now we're going to move into a vote, and um, um, that vote is um, a motion. And I motion, um, uh, just bear with me one minute as I pull up that uh, motion. Um, and that is. Um, In, uh, in pursuant of the, the, the vote is um, removal for cause of the principal pursuant to section, uh, pursuant to statute 105 ILCS 5 uh, slash 34 dash 85 as it relates to student safety and other concerns. Do I have a second for that motion? I will second. Thank you, Lori. The floor is open for discussion. Great. Can, 
I just say one thing. Um, I just want everyone on this call to know that everyone on this board is taking this vote very seriously, um, understanding repercussions, understanding effects on everybody. And I would just like to speak. I'm very proud of the people who have served on this board and really trying to do what's best for um, the students and the staff and administration at Tubman. And so just wanting everyone to know that this is a vote that no one is taking lightly and no one feels great about tonight. Thank you, Kate. All right, uh, any, uh, we'll move forward with the, uh, there's no other points of discussion. We'll move forward with the roll call for the vote. And I will call that in order of folks I see on the screen. You can respond yay, nay, or abstain. Uh, Nick. Yay. Kate. Yay. Cindy. Yay. Lori. Yay. Kirsten. Yay. Emily. Yay. And Sarah is a yay. That's seven votes and that is unanimous. Right. Um, now we want to move into um, the next point of the agenda, which is to discuss um, action steps. There were some um, action steps that was discussed in closed session that I think we'd like to share um, moving forward into the next school year. Um, and um, um, Cindy, I don't, I can kick off those action steps or if you wanted to kick us off of those action steps, um, let me know either way. Um, I can do that. Um, uh, we, were, we discussed adding additional evaluation criteria for the principal. Um, steps and guides regarding reporting. So something that is accessible to the entire school community. Um, some clarification on what those are and providing that on our website. Um, to have our committee work continue. Um, adding specific support for staff for social and emotional development from an outside resource moving forward. Um, continue to retrieve documentation for principal evaluation throughout the year, not just right before the eval, but starting even in July. And uh, that's what I have so far. Did you, was there more? I'm just, um, making sure we have those follow-up supports from the Office of Equity for our teachers as it relates to um, those DIE supports. That's okay. Okay. Sarah, could Kashasha maybe just kind of review the next steps after the charge that we just voted on that she kind of shared with us so that parents are aware of those next steps? Um, I'll open the floor to Kashasha if you want, she wants to share that. Um, I can also, you know, uh, yeah, I'll open the floor to Kashasha. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, for allowing me to be recognized. Um, so with the vote uh, for the approval charges for removal, um, the LSC will share in writing with the CEO the basis of the charges and whatever evidence um, they, that you have. The CEO has 45 days to respond to the, uh, your letter uh, directing um, or request for removal. Within that 45 days, the CEO will respond in writing whether he will approve the charges and remove the principal or not approve the charges and discuss whatever next steps he deems appropriate. Um, and that's... Oh, the other question that people may be, uh, um, they may have inquiry around is during this time where the CEO does um, consider charges, the, the principal does remain um, uh, in office, for lack of a better word, um, during this time as well. Thank you, Kashasha. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so 
Um, I'm going to call this meeting to closure, uh, given that that's the last point on our agenda. Um, it is 828 and a motion to close the meeting. Do I have a second? I, I second. second. <laughs> it's open session. Um, just want to just quickly thank everyone for their thoughtfulness and put feedback. Um, and we'll put roll call. Um, I'll call in order in which I see folks on the screen. Uh, yay, nay, Epstein. Nick. Kate. Kate. Yay. Cindy. Yay. Lori. Yay. Kristen. Kristen looks frozen. I hope that's a yay. We're going to be stuck in session if she doesn't come in. <laughs> uh, Emily. Yay. And uh, myself oh, is yeah. yay. Um, I think we're okay to wrap this up. It's 829. Um, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you again. Take care.